Hello, how are you doing? Let me introduce you to my tiny little glitchy drummer. It's awesome and I love it. Uh, it solves a big problem for me because I am terrible at programming drums. I've never been good at playing drums and I'm even worse at programming drums. So I can't even get like simple loops to sound uh, any good at all. I, I like to think I'm reasonably musical and have a sense of rhythm, but not when it comes to drums. I cannot do drum stuff. So I have made myself a little drummer. And he's really fun. I really like this. Um, this is a good setup for me. Um, if I'm having fun jamming with percussion in a way that I never have before. Um, and basically, this is the result of having watched far too many Mylar Melodies videos. I mean, I'm, I'm into modular synths, so therefore I am also into YouTube. I feel like I have probably completed YouTube at this point, certainly when it comes to Eurorack stuff. Um, and Mylar Melodies makes excellent videos. And in quite a lot of them, one module comes up. Mutable instruments, grids, 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 grids. That's just grids. So I have considered the idea of having the second grids, 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 grids. Yes, mutable instruments, grids. Um, it's a rhythm generating module, um, which is exactly what I need. It comes up with drum rhythms, which I myself am terrible at creating. Uh, sounds like a perfect recipe for mixing in with my system and improving my percussion. But uh, mutable instruments aren't making modules anymore. Emily has retired, so all the modules are discontinued. They've sold off most of the old stock, and certainly Grids is out of stock, never to be uh, in stock again, basically. Uh, I can't find any secondhand. I think anyone who has them is obviously holding onto them tightly. Um, and also, um, there aren't any clones, because mutable instrument stuff, of course, is open source. There's clones of it, and there's various different versions of it. So I have a, a monsoon and a pachinko, which are both clones of mutable things with some things tweaked, and they're really great. So it's a really nice ecosystem, and there are clones of grids. There's like a nano grids, which is a bit smaller than the actual grids, so it uses less HP. Um, but I can't find any of those either. So I've had to resort to something a little bit more involved. Um, I have roped in the services of my friend here, the Droid. Um, the Droid is a fantastic, uh, I, I think it describes itself as a universal CV processor. Um, it's by Demandmit the Machina, and it's essentially a programmable module. Um, it's got eight inputs and eight outputs, and it's capable of doing anything apart from audio. So if it involves CV, gates, triggers, varying voltages, LFOs, envelopes, anything, Droid can do it. And the way Droid works is it has a little SD card here. And on that SD card, there's a little text file. It's actually quite simple. And you define what you want each of the inputs and outputs to do. Um, it also has a few expanders. So I've got two of them here um, with two pots and eight buttons. I, in fact, I even have an extra one of these that I'm going to add in soon. So I can kind of do some kind of you know, sequence of pattern with the button thing down there. But anyway, for the moment, I'm just recreating grids on the Droid. The way grids works is, or the way, at least the way I understand grids to work, is that it has um, essentially a topography of rhythms that you can cycle between. So if I we set up, this is a rhythm with a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat pattern. And by changing two pots, turning two knobs, we can navigate around the topology of rhythms. It's essentially they're, they're laid out on a grid and we're changing the X and Y axes with these knobs. So, see now the rhythm has changed. Turn the knob, the rhythm has changed again. And pop the knobs back to their original positions and we get that original rhythm that we had to start with. And then within each rhythm, we can vary how much or how little of each voice is coming through. So at the moment, they're all on minimum settings, so we're not getting very much at all. But if I turn this CV value here, inject more CV into the snare, we get more snares coming through. And the same applies to the hi-hats. And to the kick as well. So within each rhythm that we've got within here, we also have variants of the density of each of the channels. So you can have a very dense, very busy pattern, change the, the rhythm that you're using, 
have another very dense, very busy pattern, but then also, without changing the rhythm, change what you're hearing because you're changing the density. It's probably worth looking at how this is wired up now then. So um, these gray wires here are the clock, the clock source coming from PAMS and then every 32 steps I've got a reset just to make sure that when I start changing things we always block back on the one, back to the start of a rhythm. Um, and then we've got three channels. So there's three channels here of CV coming in from my triplet, which is just varying CV from zero to five volts. Um, if I turn these all the way up here, I'm sending in five volts. If I turn them all the way down here, I'm sending in zero volts. And that is what is determining the density of each channel. And then each channel has two outputs. So here we have the regular pulse output going to the kick and then the accent output going to the kick. That's one of the uh, things that makes this quite a useful tool for me, particularly for making rhythms, because this is something I've always had trouble programming myself. If we focus on the kick, uh, the uh, hi-hat, for instance, and we'll walk back to a, a busier rhythm. Uh, so we'll be using, for, the, for our voices, I'm using these 808 clones from Tip Top. Um, I just got these secondhand on reverb because you know I'm not, I'm not really into my drums, so I'm still experimenting and learning. These these principles can be applied to more complex voices later. Um, yeah, this is the the hi hat signal coming in. So I've got the regular pulse and the accent. If I take the accent away, it sounds very mechanical. It sounds this is kind of the sort of stuff that I normally get when I'm programming manually. <laughs> This is, this is the, the amount of complexity I can normally inject. So by having the accent output as well for each rhythm, you actually get something more musical. It's got a bit of feel to it and a bit of something interesting. So each of these is outputting a CV value, which is determining the density of the voice. The voices then are coming out here. They're going into a little three channel mixer up here. Um, going into Data Bender and then go straight out to my recorder where I'm monitoring from headphones. So everything that you're hearing currently is within this box. And in fact, we're not even hearing Data Bender because it's not turned on and doing anything. I think what probably would be fun is to use our little, uh, our little latching switch up here to send a pulse. Um, so I've got a, a pulse set up here that's not, being, not currently going in. Um, so the last two beats of every bar, it's just sending a high gate which then activates the mix value on data bender and makes the, makes the beat a bit that little bit more interesting. And this is where it becomes a playable instrument. And I can actually have fun messing around with rhythms, which is something I've never done before. It's always been a really tedious part of my setup that I've never really enjoyed. But suddenly, because of this little setup here, and particularly the fun that you get from like going crazy with data bender as well which is yeah, a whole other thing in itself but yeah i'm having fun with drums in modular worth noting there's a few differences in my implementation as well so I'm, I'm, I've never played with the grids firsthand but I'm basing what I've seen on, on videos and through the manual and from the source code I know grids has an element of randomness that is injected into rhythms which this does not have I've set this up based on the uh, steps the, the sequences for the rhythms are all hard-coded and if you've got more of a rhythm it will always be the same rhythm um, whereas Grids, I believe, has a chaos knob, I think is what they call it, and that will change probabilities of whether certain steps will play. Uh, for this, this implementation, it's all the same 32-step sequence every time, just looping. Um, you get your variation from actually from twiddling the knobs and, and playing it. Um, uh, I think also Grids has Euclidean sequencing as an option, which this current setup does not, but then I've got Euclidean patterns in, in, in PAMS, and Droid also has Euclidean circuits, so I've got an extra channel here. Um, 
And the extra channel also leads us to the ways that this could be better than grids, because in theory, I could add an expander and have an, I could very comfortably have another three channels of rhythms. Um, grids only has the three channels, but we could have like, essentially a six channel grid, so dual grids. Um, if you wanted to program the, the patterns for yourself, um, actually doing the code to make the patterns it took me a long time to work out how to translate from these arrays of numbers, which are how the patterns are represented within the grid source code, to turn them into sequences um, that are, or what I should say, sequencer circuits for the droid. Um, but I have done that. And not only have I done that, but I've also made a little script that I can run that will take essentially a JSON array of um, arrays, <laughs> a whole list of arrays of your rhythms, um, uh, from a file and generate the the droid patch that you need. Um, so you don't have to do the hard work. You can just download this from GitHub, where, where the link will be in the uh, description. And you can change the patterns and the values that are actually used, which is a very complex, it's a pretty tough co process in, uh, in grids itself. So I used, uh, as part of the research for this video, I, I, I relied heavily on a chap called Michael Forrest, who's done a great video about hacking grids. And then he's also done an, an interactive beat, um, pattern sequencer online, which replicates the, the, the grids logic. So um, that was very helpful in showing me, like, it, it really helped me get into how the, the logic was working, because it, a lot of it was written in JavaScript, which I know how to write, whereas I don't really know how to write the, uh, the code that the, the grids itself is written in. Um, and part of that process is you've got to then, like, boot up a, a, a local dev environment. There's a whole kind of stuff you've got to install, there's stuff you've got to compile, you've got to build. This is still like the way I've got it set up. You have to run a node script, um, but it's essentially running one script off a text file into another text file. So um, editing is you download the repo, you edit the text file for the rhythms that you want. You're just changing the numbers of the, the numbers that you care about, which are the rhythms themselves. You then run one script and that generates the text file that you copy onto the SD card and you're off to the races. So the process of then changing the rhythms that are within the mechanism is much quicker with this than it is with um, uh, than it is with grids proper. Even though the code to actually <laughs> to get this generated in the first place did take me a little while. It was a bit tough. So yeah, go and give it some stars on on GitHub and, and show me some love if you you're making use of that. I have a 
Toy with me. Despite there only being 20 different patterns in my version of, of grids, uh, once you throw in changing in BPM, changing the density, changing the patterns, there's actually a, like a massive variety of stuff. Um, and I'm finding grooves and rhythms that I would never have programmed myself, and that particularly when I added some randomness from the data vendor, I feel like these two are a fantastic pairing in this regard, because it really kind of just adds that little bit of spice that I would never have put in manually, because I just, I just don't know how better programmers, better synth players probably would be able to do that. But for me, it's giving me a new lease of life, and yeah, it's just fantastic fun.